Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show, our week seven prediction show. Paul, joined by Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia and Zach Bloomquist, the best executive producer in the game, fresh off another day of moving cement, right? Concrete. All day. It doesn't matter what I call it. Concrete. All right, concrete. We, We're we going to be like, specific. Yeah, no, no. We don't do cement. Is cement that for, like... Cement's for the week. Is that a thing in the uh, in the industry? Yeah, you get yeah, upset yeah, if yeah, you yeah, call yeah. it cement? Yeah. Okay. No, we're well, concrete. Well, Zach was moving. Did you know Did you know Ziggy Zach moved a 67-pound object the other day? 67 pounds. 67,000? 67,000 pounds. Yeah. Well, I okay, I was going to say 67 pounds. Like, I can move that. Oh, oh yeah. did I not say 1,000? 67,000 pounds, apparently. Yeah. Well, you picked it up? Yeah, I picked it up myself. No, we had a crane come in and pick it up and load it onto one of the, uh, load it onto a, not really a tractor. I guess it's a tractor trailer, technically. Wait, did you operate the crane? I did not operate the crane. Then what do you oh, do? So you, Paul's so saying you, so you, you did moved not, it. Well, Zach said to me, he said, I moved oh, a 67,000 pound object. Yeah, someone's got to hook mean? it up. What do you mean you oh, hooked it up? No, I, hooking it up isn't moving I it. never said I. I said we. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, this is this is <laughs> okay. like when I say like yeah. we won this weekend when I'm talking about the Vikings. I didn't do crap for the Vikings <laughs> to win. I'm just mm. sitting back and watching it happen. Well, that, it sounds like you hooked it up. Uh, I did a little hooking up of it. Yeah, I mean, look, look, if you, that the counts for something. Had to, then somebody had to stop traffic to make sure the truck came out because it was. Like, I would not want to be in in traffic with you moving a sixty seven thousand. No, no, pound. I didn't. I didn't have to move it. I no, no, you. I don't want you involved in, at at all in the moving of a sixty seven thousand pound object near my car. Wow, that, that's crazy to hear. No, I mean, I in most in most scenarios, I would trust you, but when it comes to you know, sixty-seven thousand pound object hanging from the sky. I, well, it's not hanging from the sky. I mean, it's it's, it's up basically there. hanging from the sky. It's up uh, there. Yeah, I mean, it didn't have to. It had to go like three feet in the air. Oh, oh all right. Still, I, I'd uh, yeah, I, I'd be. I guess you are a professional though at this point. Uh, some would say. Well, week seven is underway tonight as the Jaguars and the Saints square off in New Orleans. The Saints are still. I have a lot of hated teams in the NFL. It just it, it, it's a it's a list that will never shrink. It'll only grow over time. The Eagles have been added to that. The Packers have always been towards the top with the Bears. I hate the Saints. They actually might be number one. So I hope that they get their ass kicked by Jacksonville. They're Trump, going to yeah. As long as Ryan Ramsey and James Hurst are out, yeah. As long as Lawrence is, is there, I'm, I'm pretty. I feel good about the Jaguars. We'll get into that a little bit more in our game picks. But, you know, I, screw the Saints. I, I am very much looking forward to them getting demolished on Thursday Night Football. Ne- I never want any happiness for those fans ever again. But we're going to go over the Lions and Ravens today. Eagles and Dolphins. Zach, another big opportunity for your Miami squad. We got game picks. And uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the big injuries right now. There are some players returning from, uh, or soon to be returning from IR. And some players, a lot of quarterbacks actually, 10 from the start of this season, uh, starting quarterbacks are injured or either on IR at this point. It's It's been a kind of a weird season when it comes to quarterback injuries. Of course, starting off with Aaron Rodgers uh, in Monday Night Football, or even Kyler Murray going back to, to last December. A lot of quarterbacks who should be playing are not right now. We'll talk about them. But let's start with Lions-Ravens. And when you, start, when you looked at the football schedule early this season, this may not have been a game you'd circled. A lot of Lions fans probably were ready for it because they – to be fair to them, expected to be very good this year. And at 5-1, and one, you have to say that they are. Uh, and, and I'm excited to see this matchup because the Lions, a lot of people are saying right now, yeah, they're 5-1, and one, but who have they really beat? You know, they played the Seahawks and, and lost that game. They played the Chiefs, but Kelsey was out. Chris Jones was out. All the other games they're playing right now, Falcons are okay. Buccaneers are okay. Um, have they really proved themselves yet? And this is an opportunity to go into Baltimore, play Lamar Jackson, who's playing at an MVP level, and get a big statement win, another statement win. And what's exciting for me about this, Ziggy, is the Ravens, we know what they like to do. They want to bully you up front and run down your throat. They run more than anyone else in the league, almost 34 times per game, 203 total attempts on the year. That leads all football. And when you think about the great defenses in the NFL right now, The Eagles come to mind in that nasty front seven. That defensive line is amazing. The 49ers people will talk about. The Browns are making headlines every week, it seems. But do you know who the number one team in the NFL in terms of rushing yards allowed per game is, Mr. Ziegler? Who is it, Paul? It's the Detroit Lions at 64.7 yards per game allowed this year. And that defense is top 10 in basically 
every category this year, or in most, in, in yards per game and points per game allowed, the Lions rank in top 10. We talked about that in the Week 6 reaction show. This Lions defense is making big strides, and that's a, a, as much a reason that they're up here at 5-1 and one, and a big contender as the NFC as the offense is. So I can't wait to see strength versus strength in this one. Are the Lions able to shut down the Ravens? Because their offense will be fine in Detroit. But can they shut down Lamar, who's, again, the only people, the only person this year to go up against the Browns' offense and have success has been Lamar Jackson. Where do you stand on a first glance at this game? Are you thinking that Detroit might be able to go in there and beat the Ravens? Everybody's excited about the Ravens this week, right? You listen to the media and everyone's talking Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. Well, here are the quarterbacks the Ravens have faced through week six. Just to give you an idea, they faced debut CJ Stroud, injured Joe Burrow, Gardner Minshew, debut Dorian Thompson Robinson, <laughs> the Pickett Trubisky duo, and Ryan Tannehill. That's it. That is who, and Ryan Tannehill, let's not forget, he got hurt and they basically got to cruise the second half of the game against Malik Willis, who might be the least situationally aware player I've ever seen. Right, the announcers would say the only thing he can't do is take a sack here, and then he take a fifteen yard sack. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This happened three or four plays in a row. Oh, I remember seeing the text from from you and Zach coming in about Malik Willis. You you were not happy. So, so this Ravens team, people are talking about how the Lions have improved a lot because all they've done is beaten the Chiefs by one point, and otherwise have had a pretty easy schedule. Well, the Ravens have played a lot of tough fought games. Their average margin of victory is lower than the Lions. And they haven't played the good teams either, right? They lost to the Steelers. They lost in overtime to Minshew. It was closer than it should have been against the Titans. It was closer than it should have been against the Bengals. I'm not seeing... There's a lot to like about this team, but the Lions are far and away their hardest opponent. So the thought that you're getting that the Lions just can't go to Baltimore and win, I think is outrageous. Well, are you are you hearing that a lot? I haven't seen too much of that, but is that... Is that the vibe that you're picking up that the Lions can't can't win this game? Because I I mean we both disagree with that. I'm hearing a lot of people say that the rate like no one's doubting Lamar Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. But That's fair. people have been doubting the offense around him. But otherwise, no, I haven't heard a whole lot. People are saying, look, the Ravens have far and away the better quarterback. They've got a great defense. I mean, look, and it's true, right? You look at the kinds of players they've got on the defense. Roquan Smith, very good. Marlon Humphrey, very good. Kyle Hamilton, you and I know him well, very good. good Jadavion Clowney having a little bit of a renaissance season. So, yeah, there's definitely things to like about this team, but I just, I'm not seeing it. I really think the Lions are going to go in and dominate. The team's just too hot. I got some numbers for you right here. And I want I want you guys, Zach, I, I'd like to, to loop you in on this one too here for a second. Pick this court, pick a quarterback, ready? It should be pretty easy to do this. Quarterback A has 1,618 yards, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions on the season. Quarterback B, 1,593 yards, 11 touchdowns, five interceptions on the season. Quarterback A or B? Who are you picking? I hate this crap, Paul. Oh, oh like A. I mean, I mean, I know you hate this, but I love this stuff. Quarterback Thank A, you. Jared Goff. <laughs> Quarterback B, Patrick Mahomes. Both 5-1, and one. and when you look at Jared Goff this season, first in passes of 20-plus yards, third in QB rating, third in yards per attempt, fourth touchdowns responsible for, fifth in passing yards, fourth tied fourth completion percentage. Everywhere you look, dude's top five. He's having a phenomenal season right now. And he kind of has been floating along quietly because the Lions themselves are getting a lot of publicity right now, as they should. But Jared Goff and the success he's having this year is kind of going under the radar a little bit. And a lot of that is because, yeah, Dan Campbell is such a public coach. He's such a such a personable guy. David Montgomery has had some big games. He's, he took over um, the other night against the Packers. He was the media darling. But Jared Goff has been awesome. So what I want to ask you, Ziggy, and I, I feel like this is where people can really start to either get mad at us or in support. People will not have strong reactions to what you say here. If I no told pressure. you tomorrow that the Detroit Lions need to win a football game to save your life. And I gave you the option of having Jared Goff start the game or another quarterback. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Ready? Go Jared Goff or Trevor Lawrence? I got to go Trevor Lawrence. Goff or Dak Prescott? Dak's had some tough games. Give me, give me Goff. Matthew Stafford. Stafford. 
Justin Herbert. That's a tough one. I think Herbert's the better player, but he's looked bad the past couple of games. Wow. Give me Herbert. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought for a second you were going to go. I was, I had to think about it. All right. Here's an easy one. Kirk Cousins. Jared Goff. Oh, my God. Goff is just better cousins this year. Fair. Very fair. Jalen Hurts. Man, Paul, that's another curveball. I'll tell you what, Jalen Hurts, he looked great last year. We haven't seen the same stuff out of him this year. I'm taking Jared Goff. He will deliver the ball. Wow. Okay. All right. That's three and three now. We got three more quarterbacks. Some big ones. Lamar Jackson. Lamar is just too much of a threat in the rushing game. You got to take Lamar. Tua? Jared Goff's the better version of Tua. Give me Goff. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> no, that, I can't J- J- Jared Goff is putting up all the numbers Tua is without two all-world wide receivers. I mean, he's got Amon Ross St. Brown, all-world receiver. Yeah, versus Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle for most of his games. Yeah, hey, okay. hey, here's the here's the tiebreaker right now. Current Joe Burrow. Current Joe Burrow? Yep. I still don't trust that calf. You know, he's looked okay, but Jared Goff, you can count on him week in, week out. He's going to play well. I think I got to take Goff over what we've seen from Burrow this year. Wow. So in a football game tomorrow to save your life, you take Jared Goff over Joe. Give him what we've seen this year. Absolutely. Zach. I'm sorry. He lost all credibility when he said two (laughs) wasn't as good. Wow. Well, we'll have to see what people say about that. Uh, people should be irate about the Kirk Cousins statement, but they they really should. No, they won't. People will be very on board with that. Okay, so a couple big big guys right there: Burrow, Tua, Hurts. Wait, Chiefs. how many yards is Goff thrown for? Goff. He's thrown for like sixteen, eighteen to two is like what eighteen fifty. You see, yeah, sixteen, eighteen for Goff. I don't have two in front of me right now. Yeah. Two, two has been awesome. Yeah. I'm not th- look. This isn't my list. I just wrote down the names. I'm just saying, two has five interceptions. Goff has three. So it it, it, it should be a really fun game this weekend, Lions and Ravens. Another probably game of the week here uh, for Detroit, or at least one of the games of the week, involves the Lions, which, yeah, fun for their fan base because they, they keep winning right now. They're winning all these games. All right, we can move on from the Lions, I think. We'll move on. I'll just say this much. I'll say this much. I'll say this much. Hold on. Aiden Hutchinson, he had a quiet week last week against the Buccaneers, right? Three tackles, zero sacks, some nice pressures. Watch out from against the Ravens. I think he's got the speed and size to take down Lamar. And one final thought from, from me on this. The Lions feel like a team. Like they, they, actually, they feel like a team. They feel like a unit right now. Everyone's playing good football. There's really nowhere you look and there's too big of a hole. The Ravens, on the other hand, at, at this current moment in time, are very reliant on Lamar Jackson. If he's not playing superstar, <clears throat> if he's not playing superstar football, they're going to struggle to win games, and that's that's one spot where I might actually be leaning Detroit because they're just a really good team, top to bottom. And Baltimore has a little bit more holes and a little more issues that they need to work out. Uh, where Detroit, something could go wrong, but another unit can step up very easily. It, it should be a great game. Let's uh, let's go on though, Zach. To a real team. To a real team. To a real team. To a real team. The Dolphins and the Eagles. And in getting ready for this game, I was just thinking back to last season's Dolphins and how early in the year they took down Baltimore. They took down Buffalo. I remember Zach almost put a hole in my basement, literally jumping my my ceiling seven feet tall down there. After uh, the fumble recovery against Buffalo, he jumped and hit his head, almost put a hole in the ceiling downstairs. It was just an awesome start to the year for Dolphins fans, eight and three. And then they had an opportunity to really go after the one seed and they lost four games in a row, San Francisco chargers, the bills and the Packers. A lot of those games were kind of prove it moments. At least I felt that San Francisco game is one I've had circled that I keep going back to on this show. It felt like an opportunity to say we're here and Miami didn't show up in that one. Easy there. We also just, Brock Purdy came out of nowhere. Sure, Brock Purdy came out of nowhere, but that was that was a game where it felt like the Dolphins had an opportunity to prove themselves. And I know Tua was going through, like just coming back from injuries and stuff. But again, this year you play B- Buffalo and you're 3-0, and just hang 70 on Denver. And in a game where you can make a statement to the league, it felt like you came up short again. And that's that's where I'm at with the Dolphins right now. A really good team that I don't, actually think has arrived yet despite 
the crazy numbers on offense. They have the second most yards ever through six games behind only the greatest show on turf Rams. But despite all that, I still have this feeling of hesitation with them because I don't trust them in the big game. I feel like you're getting ready to mute me over there. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Is that is that a fair thing to say about the Dolphins right now? Yeah, yeah. just watch this Sunday. That's well, no, no. That's think. exactly what I'm getting to is this weekend against Philadelphia, a team that hasn't really found themselves this year. that You just lost to the Jets for crying out loud. This is a chance. Go and win this game. Get to 6-1. and one. You're in the one-seed hunt right now. You're, you're in the Super Bowl race. These are the games that you need to win to, to really have special seasons. And it's all there in front of Miami. I, I just I need to see them do it before I can fully get on the Dolphins winning the Super Bowl train. Is that is that fair, Ziggy? Or am I maybe putting a little too much pressure on the Dolphins against a really, really good Eagles team? I actually think while this Eagles team is good, this is one of those games the Dolphins have to win. Why? Because the Eagles are reeling right now, right? They're coming off a uh, a tough loss to the Jets. And this is one of those games where the Eagles are looking to bounce back, right? They're going to come out hard. The yep. offense is going to try and play well, much better than they looked last week. The defense is going to be hunting for blood because they figure they've got to carry this team. Despite the Eagles having an injury list a mile long, do you see all the players they've got injured? It's a lot. It's a, it's. I saw Jalen Carter and Slay, it looks like, might be back. Yeah, so here's just a list of players who didn't practice who were severely limited. Reed Blankenship, Lane Johnson, Devontae Smith, Jalen Carter, Dallas Goddard, and Darius Slay, plus some rotation players. Oof. Like that's a lot of talent that did not practice for them today. Mm-hmm. So if you're the Dolphins, I think you know your offense is good. You have to be able to go into Philly and win these big games because you're still looking for the one seed, right? You're five and one. You're tied with the Chiefs. You're worried about the Ravens and the Jaguars, the Bills, a couple other teams, but that one seed is yours. Winning the games that are tough to win are what's going to give them that edge. Yeah, two of the next three weeks, you go to Philly and you go to Kansas City. If the Dolphins win both those games... Well, we don't go to Kansas City. We go to Germany. Oh, Germany. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you get you have Kansas City on the schedule in two of the next three weeks with the Eagles. If you win those two games, uh, then it's like, all right, Super Bowl is 100% on. One seed's probably on. We keep seeing these teams have to go to Kansas City and magical things happen there, except for Joe Burrow that one time. It just feels like they're always going to win those games. This is one of them now. Yeah, go beat a banged-up Eagles team who just lost to the Jets. But, Ziggy, you bring up another good point here. This could be a weekend where the Eagles say, hey, slow down, remember who we are. And that seems to be everything coming. That would fit the... It would fit the the Dolphins. Dolphins. It it would fit what happens (laughs) to the Dolphins, especially after that loss. The loss to the Jets might be the worst thing that could have happened for the Dolphins. Because now the Eagles are taking a moment. You said Ziggy last week, didn't they have a players only meeting after the game? Yeah, they kicked Sirianni out and said, We're gonna figure this out ourselves and we're gonna that, come back that, and that take the just, tar out of the Dolphins. Yeah, that, <laughs> right. that could be disastrous for you, Zach. But with a refocus, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Carter is coming. You know, Jalen Carter, five games, he has eleven tackles, four QB hits, three and a half sacks, and two forced fumbles. No, I mean he's been incredible. I, I saw I was reading a tweet and someone said, Yeah, the Eagles might get their best defensive player back. I was like, that might be a stretch, but you know, maybe he he could be the best player on that loaded defense. It's oh, I can't believe he fell to them. That that's a whole nother a whole nother hey, way. Zach, I have a question for you. Hit me, Ziggy, hit me. Have with Tua it. and Jalen Hurts played each other at the NFL level yet? N- I don't no, think so. I don't think so. This is one person. of those storylines that, like, nobody's really talking about this. Oh, I think. I but I wonder, line. you know, like, this is certainly something I think that's got to be playing into this game for both of these players, right? On the one hand, you know, you talk about the special connection. Nick Saban has come out and talked about that. But the other hand, these are two players that know each other really well and competed with each other for a long time at various points in their careers in college. I'm really interested to see how these guys come out and handle this game because this is a big pressure moment in the NFL for both of these teams. And I've got to imagine it's tough not to think back a little bit to that Alabama quarterback competition. Yeah. And you know who's going to have the chip on his shoulder? Uh, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's incredible. We, you can we, see, can, you see this coming, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I totally see it coming. They they got destroyed. By, or they didn't get destroyed by the Jets, but the Jets slowed them down and they lost. And now... 
who was the guy that took over during the Alabama <laughs> championship game. This is it, the it game where you're going like, to like two is going to throw two or three picks. Yeah. And it's going to, it's, it's going to slow, slowly fall, slip away. Yep. Yeah. And being in Philly is, is in no help Philly, at all. You know, this is just made for them to win. Sunday night football. But you know what? We're going to go in there and we're going to kick the butt out of all. Of those Eagles. Oh, well said. Way, way to strike fear into Eagles Nation right there. Well, I'll, I'll say this much. This game is interesting because you've got strength on strength and weakness on weakness. I have no worries about the Dolphins offense scoring, even against a pretty tough Eagles defense. The interesting question, I think, is going to be how Jalen Hurts and the Eagles respond to a Dolphins defense that, while it's played decent, has definitely had some tough moments, right? They gave up 34 to the Chargers, 48 to the Bills, 20 to the Broncos. Okay, the, the 20 of the Broncos was a joke. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, like, and again, you know, you look at last week, they let the Panthers get off to a 14 0 start. You can't do that against the Eagles. So, how the defense is going to play, I think that's really the interesting matchup this game. We also could be without Howard this week, too. Howard could be out. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Well, Devontae Smith just randomly popped up on the injury report, too. So, who knows? I mean, lost star players are in jeopardy they, of this that's game. So, they picked up Julio. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. I'm not worried about the Julio one. Big Julio Jones podcast here. Big, big. It's Julio it's funny. Jones despite podcast. the the Dolphins and all the coverage they get for how great their offense is, the Eagles are kind of flying a little under the radar this year. They have second most yards per game, fifth most points in the NFL right now. This Eagles offense is really, really good. And that probably will be the matchup to determine. If you had to pick unit versus unit, it'll be the Eagles offense versus the Dolphins defense. Uh, they'll probably determine this one. Can Miami get some stops? Because they should be able to put points up in almost every game. It's like Buffalo. They lost Buffalo because you know they could not stop the Bills. Things just went wrong in that one for you for you guys, though. Yeah, the, the Bills played a perfect game. Didn't have any penalties. They go and play the Jaguars. Have like eight penalties. Oh, yeah. No, they no. Play, against you, it's perfect. So, yeah. so Eagles will probably win like 30, what, 42 to 20? 42 to 20. 20. 42 to 20 sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they'll you guys play a, win. They'll play a perfect game. There won't be one flag on the Eagles. We'll have about 12. <laughs> I'm already hey, seeing I, I'm rooting for you guys. I can't stand them. Okay, let's uh, let's talk a little bit now about those injuries we mentioned. Just the quarterbacks who are out uh, might come back later uh, later on this season. There was a lot of news, and we could start off very unfortunate. We I didn't see this coming at all by Anthony Richardson. I'm sorry. When it first happened, I didn't see this coming at all. I just and want to put it out there. I totally You did call it. You said it. Immediately after Anthony Richardson went down with the shoulder injury, Zach Tex probably done for the season. He had an unjustified true belief. That's what the philosophers would say. Yes. I, I Whatever. That I mean, sounds accurate. Just to put it out there, I was watching the game and saw him walking away with that shoulder. Yeah, that, that, that's not what justification is, Zach. Dr. Zach. But I, Dr. I, Zach I knows. That's, that's the takeaway yeah. here. The doc knows. So he's out for the season, which... You know, it's probably my fault for drafting him in fantasy. <laughs> that's that's part of it. I just had the injury bug this year. So I apologize to Anthony Richardson for, for uh, you know, ruining his rookie season. But he's out for the year, and now Gardner Minshew will take over. And that basically takes away all interest I have in the Indianapolis Colts. Sorry, Colts fans. We were uh, we were almost on to something special, the Paul Farrington Show and Colts fans. We, we were kind of flirting with uh, some, big, some big episodes, big breakout clips, but not sure that will happen unless Gardner Minshew... Really, uh, flips some scripts here. I don't think so either. But some other quarterbacks, other quarterback news. Kyler Murray returned to practice finally. Uh, the 21 day window for him to return from the physically unable to perform list has opened up now. It's the first practice for Murray, even though he is limited since he tore his ACL last December. And we talked about this for momentarily before the show started. But I can see Cardinals fans having the approach of, oh no, like despite Josh Dobbs playing okay. We were on to something with all the losing here. They probably are, are paying attention very closely to the standings and who's going to end up with that number one overall pick. But Ziggy, you said to calm down because it really can't go wrong for Arizona, whether or not Kyler Murray comes back and looks good or whether he comes back and looks terrible. Yeah, so like let's, let's think about this for a second. Kyler Murray's coming back. And right now, in a certain way, you don't quite know what you have in it. He's a guy who's played some good. He's a guy who's played some bad. But lots of things went wrong at the end of the Cliff Kingsbury tenure, right? So I don't think you can read too much into that. There's two ways this go. One is Kyler Murray looks pretty good, and the Cardinals win some games. 
you know, they're still not going to win a ton. They'll still probably have a pretty high draft pick. But if he looks good, they'll win a few more games they did with Dobbs. Right? Take, like, that Giants game. They probably win that, for instance. Or he comes and looks pretty bad, and he's not much better than Dobbs. In that case, you're going to have a really high draft pick. Maybe not number one overall, but then you'll know you can move on from the guy. Either way, you're going to learn some information. You'll have a pick pretty high in the NFL draft. And if you need to go get a successor, you can. And if you don't need to go get it, then you've got a great quarterback. Either way, you're doing all right. Is it crazy, though? I'm just trying to think through all the different scenarios that Cardinals fans are playing in their brain. Is it crazy to say, why don't we just sit this guy for the full year? Josh Dobbs, to be fair to Josh Dobbs, has looked pretty good as like a back, like a very good backup quarterback in the NFL. But if you just bench Murray and ride this out, hope for the number one pick, isn't that the dream for the Cardinals fans? Because if, if Kyla comes back and stinks, then you, you lose all trade value too. His trade value is low. Yeah, right? He's on a, because of the contract. But. The guy on a big contract who everyone around the league has questions yeah, about. And, You're coming not, an, and, and, and coming off an injury. Yeah, too. he's coming off an injury. And like, look, it's easy to say, let's just lose a bunch of games and get the number one overall pick, right? Well, with Dobbs, they beat the Cardinals. They almost beat the Commanders. They wait, should wait, have beaten the Giants. Wait, who did they? They beat the, the Cowboys. The Cowboys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The Cardinals beat the Cowboys. Almost beat the Commanders. Should have beaten the Giants. Right, they could just as easily be three and three right yeah, now. But, but they're one and five. Yeah, but my point is, look at all the teams that are one and five. You got the Giants who can't play their quarterback. You got the Bears who can't play their quarterback. You got the Panthers who probably shouldn't play their quarterback. You got the Patriots who can't play their quarterback. You got the Broncos who shouldn't play their quarterback. Oh. Like there are so many, but one and five or zero and six teams hoping to just outsuck them and get. Caleb Williams, I think, is not a sane strategy when you are the only one of those teams that might have a pretty good quarterback on the roster for long term. Okay, so you right, there's, there's a reason yeah. he got that contract. No, there he, is a reason, and he needs he does need to get some sort of repertoire established with with Gannon. So at the end of this year, you like you do have it, it'll be a pretty loose leash to just go out there and you know figure it out, get it get a little bit better. There's a lot of holes that need to be fixed in Arizona. But I, I, I do imagine there are some Cardinals fans who are watching Kyler Murray get closer to a return saying like, oh man, the best chance we can have of Caleb Williams is probably not with Kyler. And yeah, it might be a crazy way of thinking, but that's how fans operate. That's, that's just how they work. But when you, yeah, you, you can't, you can't think like that when you're a team, when you're a team like the Bears, I think you can start thinking like this. You've got two swings. Your team is terrible all around. This Cardinals team is too good to give up on hoping for the next new thing. The Bears right now, so, so Justin Fields is another one of these injured quarterbacks with his right thumb. He he might have surgery. They're not Matt Eberflus isn't sure yet whether or not there's uh the, the injury he suffered against the Vikings will ultimately sideline him for more than just a week or two. But the Bears right now, when you look at their situation at one and five, plus holding the Panthers pick, uh, it's a kind of a decent time to actually be a Bears fan despite how disappointing they've been it is not a decent time to be a Bears fan. I'd rather be a Bears fan than a Vikings fan right now it might be a decent time to be a Bears fan in the offseason this is what people who tell oh, their okay, team that's what I mean that's especially I mean. well no but this is what I'm like this is the thing that outsiders sort of miss and it's easy for folks in the media to be like oh just tank or whatever losing sucks and losing a lot of games sucks but what really sucks is being like the Bears and thinking this is your season, <laughs> right? You've got a metric crap load of money going in on Justin Fields to win MVP. The defense has improved. Flus is implementing the hit system. And then it falls apart, Urban Meyer style. Honestly, close to it, yeah. Yeah, you've got your defensive coordinator entering inappropriate sexual relations. You got your. Is that uh, confirmed or is that all speculation? That's all speculation, right? The Bears confirmed he was fired due to inappropriate romantic relationships oh, within God. the building. Oh, God. So you got that. You got Justin Fields coming out saying his coaches suck. And he's right. His coaches do suck. Robbery got, at the facility. Yeah, robbery at the facility. Players getting injured. Like so many things are going wrong. They really thought this was their year. And I can't blame them, right? At a certain point as a Bears fan, you just have to hope. But their hope was betrayed. Look, I, you know what? I sort of disagree, Ziggy. I, if I were a Bears fan right now, 
and we have currently the number one and two pick in the draft, I think. Or definitely number one. I don't know where the Bears fall in the tiebreaker. I'm actually, I'm just rooting for losses over and over again. Yeah, losing sucks. But the stubborn thing about me, and, and a lot of other fans I imagine are this way, but maybe it's just a me problem, is whenever I can find any bit of hope, I go and grab that. And the number one overall pick in the draft, with when it's Caleb Williams being the front runner for it, if you're the, a Bears fan, yeah, I'm going to latch on to that. And I would be excited for that. I'd be really hopeful for the offseason. And you know what? They'll probably screw them up. Like, they're the Bears. They'll find a way to ruin the best prospect in 20 years or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I just mean, like, look, we, it's, again, how many teams' fan bases are saying, let's go get the number one overall pick? Well, guess what? Even if a lot of them try to lose, you're not going to get it. Yeah, but they, so have there's two, gonna be, they have two swings out of the six, right? Out of the seven? Yeah. That's two out of seven, but they could just as easily be the Jets taking Zach Wilson, the 49ers taking Trey Lance. But Caleb Williams is not supposed to be Zach Wilson. He's not supposed to be. No, Trey I get Lance. it. I just, that you people build in way too much confidence that they're. No, going you know to what it is. You guy. haven't been a Viking fan long enough. You don't understand what it's like to really hang on to the little faintest bit of hope because you've you've had teams win before. You can't handle. You can't. The truth. You can't. Yeah, yeah, Ziggy. Look, there comes a point where you can't handle losing anymore. That you start rooting to lose to hope to win. And that's where the Bears fans should be. <laughs> Ziggy's too much. Hey, that's Ziggy's that's too fine. Much Look, they, they, can, they can go uh, be in the top 10 of the draft and get Daniel Jones. You know what? You're, you're lo- you will be me soon. Just wait. Just wait a little bit more. We'll let the Vikings break your heart a little bit more. Okay, before we get into game picks, just one more thing. Uh, I'll finish up here. Deshaun Watson and Jimmy G both probably out this week. Desha- Watson looks like He's unsure. He said if he'll play Sunday. I know, Ziggy, you think that that could be a big problem for the Browns, you said? The, whatever's going on, the Browns know. Like, look, Deshaun Watson, the Browns keep saying, like, we think he's going to get close, right? Stefanski sort of intimated that he thought Watson could play, but that it was Watson's call not to. He's got a bruised rotator cup. Watson's calling it a micro tear. Whatever that means. I hate, that sound, a micro tear just sounds... Sounds bad. Look, I'm I'm not doubting what he's saying, but when you have the team saying we think he can come back, and Watson saying like I can't, I'm not going to put the team in jeopardy, but I don't know what timeline. I can't put myself on that. There's a chance he goes to IR, even if he doesn't go to IR. You know what Deshaun Watson said today? What? He said, you know, I might play Sunday. I might not play the rest of the season. Was that the quote? I didn't see. No, that he, he said he said uh, I might play Sunday. I might not. I'm not 100% sure I can get back this season. Oh, my gosh. And look, when Watson's played, it's not like, you know, he's he's looked better than the Browns have brought out the past couple of weeks, but it's not like he's looked great. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not trusting anyone. If it's PJ, I know they just beat the 49ers, but PJ Walker or DTR. Yeah, I think DTR is probably coming back. My point is just this. I'm not saying they shouldn't want Watson to come back, but... There's Watson. something weird going. Something's weird about that situation. Just the way it rose out of nothing, and now it's sort of turning into something. It's it's an uncomfortable situation for for the Browns because of the Sean Watson. That's that's your fault. I yeah. ruined Richardson's year. You ruined. Yeah. Well, you ruined a lot of years. You ruined okay. Jefferson's. Jefferson's. You're in the process Connors. of ruining Debo, James Connor, Debo's. Yeah. Because the yeah. <laughs> because the Browns are tied up with Deshaun Watson for three more fully guaranteed seasons after this at huge cap numbers, right? His cap hit the next three years was $64 million each, which means <laughs> they nice. either need to take that right on the chin or add more void years or extend him more. Those, That's it. That's all they can do. And boy, you know, look at next year. They only, like with Deshaun Watson, $64 million in, they got 40 players and $7 million in cap space. I was like, yeah, so I don't, you didn't say boy howdy. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not a dancing bear here. All I'm saying is this. <laughs> the, the Browns have to do whatever he wants because of the contract situation, but I am highly confident things are more tense than it seems. Whenever you get a player and a coach and medical staff whose diagnosis of an injury doesn't line up. You know, we saw with Kawhi Leonard in San Antonio, right? Tensions can flare very, very quickly. And but Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard had done so much for the Spurs, and we saw how that turned. Deshaun Watson has done absolutely nothing for the Browns. So we'll see how this goes. Sheesh. 
All right, let's go over to game picks. The uh, the quarterbacks, as we said, though, between Kyler, Fields, Watson, Richardson, Jimmy G, Danny Dimes, Trevor Lawrence, Ryan Tannehill, Josh Allen, who's is fine, but is on the report, and Aaron Rodgers. That's 10 starting quarterbacks from the beginning of the year or who you would have liked to have been playing at the start of the year. We know Kyler towards ACL, who are banged up right now. That's a third of the league right there. Now, the defense is just that good or if, or is the offensive just that bad? I think I think they're just soft. That's what really is. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing around. All right, let's uh, let's get into our game picks. We got the music. We could uh, with that, even without Jack here, we can. I'm thinking no, maybe no lone wolf since it's only three of us, right? Yeah, it, it feels a little, a little excessive, but you know, you do what you want, Zach. You're the producer of the show, not me. Yeah. We'll start off the Jaguars at the Saints tonight. New Orleans, a one and a half point favorite. Ziggy. With, without Jack here, let's start with you. The Jaguars are one point dogs. No, this is ridiculous. Give me the Jags all day. Wait, are the Jags really one point dogs? One and a half. They're really one point dogs. Yeah. One and a half. What? It was up. I believe it was three or three and a half. Went down to one and a half. That's probably a little bit of Lawrence's injury. Uh, I I still don't care. ETN's have been looking great. Give me the Jags all day. Yeah, I said at the top of the show. I hate the Saints. Saint. I, I hate the Saints. Jaguars win this one. The Lions at the Ravens. Baltimore, a three-point favorite. Yeah, I think this Lions team is it. They're a complete NFL team. The Ravens just aren't. The weapons are going to let down Lamar Jackson once again. The Lions are going to get a tough-fought victory in Baltimore. And let me tell you, this is what folks are not expecting. That stadium is going to look blue. Not Ravens blue. Lions blue. They've been traveling really well this year, the Lions fans. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Lions. Why not? They're in the NFC, right? Rather have them win than yeah, the Yeah, why not? Yeah. The, the Analytics, numbers. Yeah. Zach, Zach goes with his heart. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with the Lions as well in this one. It's a clean sweep for Detroit here. I, I love the football that we're seeing from them right now. Wolfpack. There we go. Wolfpack. I like that. I like that. Yeah, as I said in during that segment, they are a complete team. And they are not reliant on just one guy the way the Ravens. And the Ravens have a good defense. But Lamar Jackson doesn't perform. They lose. Uh, I like Detroit. Cleveland at Indianapolis. The Browns are two and a half point favorite. We could see two backup quarterbacks depending on Deshaun Watson here. We know Gardner Minshew will be playing. Who you got, Ziggy? Gardner Minshew is a uh, excellent relief pitcher. One of the best closers in the league. Terrible starter. A Browns defense is going to absolutely obliterate him. So, uh, yeah, it's we've gone from Minshew Mania to Minshew Matt. Give me the Browns. <laughs> um, well, the Browns just beat the 49ers with P.J. Walker as the quarterback, so I'm going to take the Browns. I'm also going to go Cleveland here. We talk about how Lamar Jackson is the only quarterback to really have success against this Browns defense. Gardner Minshew's not going to be the second one. Got Cleveland winning this one and covering. Washington at the Giants. Commanders are a two-and-a-half-point favorite. In New York. I don't think Tyrod can get it done. I want to pick the Giants. I like them as home dogs, but I can't. Give me the commanders. That defensive line is going to feast. It's a tough one. It is. Because Tyrod looked like he had absolutely no idea how to play football. Really? I don't I don't know if I agree with that. I thought I thought the Giants offense moved the ball up and down the field. They just struggled in the At red the zone. At the end of the half, he... Didn't All right, he situationally, he situationally made a bad decision. But the Giants played better than they've looked for a lot of Situationally, they season. made it to the red zone and couldn't score. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of situational problems. So I'm going to take the Redskins. Dude. Uh, sorry, Commanders. Dude, yeah. we're, we're trying oh, to make boo. it. We're trying to boo. make it. We're trying to make it, and you're boo. out here throwing around the R word. Come on. The, uh, the Commanders are a weird team because one week you see them go out and play really good football. Um like last week against the Falcons. Owl looks awesome. Week before, they had blown out by the Bears. Who who are the commanders? I can't really put my finger on it. And then the Giants, it's kind of like, yeah, they looked good against Buffalo. So it's it's really a toss-up. I'm going to go with the commanders because I trust them a little bit more than this Giants offense. But uh, I don't know. This one will be close. They always have good games. I'm not confident, but I go commanders. Raiders at Bears. Justin Fields is out this week. Um, Jimmy G probably out this week too. So some more backup quarterbacks in this one. You know what? They're due for a win. 
I've got no other feeling than this. Give me the Bears. I don't know who the Raiders' backup quarterback is, but I'm going to take the Raiders. It should Aren't be they o playing O'Connell? It should be O'Connell, right? Is it O'Connell? I believe so. Who is Hoyer? No, we'll, we'll get to that later. Oh, no, oh, you're oh right. Brian Hoyer. Hoyer. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Last week, but really, they should play Aiden O'Connell. It seems like from the news that's coming out, Hoyer was just brought in because he was more prepared for that week, but they're not expecting Jimmy G to play, and they want to see what they got in AOC. Oh, man. What a shit show this game's going to be. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the Raiders, but... That's just because the Bears are a little bit more incompetent. It's not. It's not a testament to to Vegas. Vegas actually. Vegas is three and three right now. They're in second in the AFC West. This is a big game for the Raiders. <laughs> it is. That's why they're going to blow it. The Bills are eight and a half point favorites at the Patriots. Buffalo coming off two pretty shaky performances the past two weeks, but New England looks unwatchable at the moment. Yeah, Ziggy looks like he's picking New England though. Look at yeah. Him. No, look, no this, way. No this, way. this Patriots team has been an utter disaster. And it's not just that they've played bad, right? I mean, it's one thing to have the losses they've had, but they look poorly coached, right? They've got penalties all over the place. Their offense is completely dysfunctional. I can't keep defending this. The Bills cover probably 12 or 13 and a half. Um, I mean, you hate these teams. I know. You got to pick one. Who should I really take is the Pats, but... Why? Who, no, 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 no. Who, who should I really take is the Pats because... In your heart. Well, yeah, that because... You want Buffalo, Buffalo to lose. Yeah, yeah, can't have Buffalo winning, but Buffalo will win. All right. So this one is, is so lopsided in your opinion that you are yeah. forsaking your heart yeah, to yeah, go with yeah, your head. Yeah. A rare move on this show, but yes, we do use our brains once in a while. <laughs> I'm also going to go Buffalo. I think they covered the eight and a half too. It's you said it best, Ziggy. It's been a disaster in New England. I can't see a Bills team that's probably trying to right the ship uh, being the place to restart if you're the Patriots. So. I think I read this as like Mac Jones like make or break game. Oh, I mean no, Mac Jones not. is at, and Mac Jones. Mac Jones is at a, a tipping point soon in New no, England. No, he's not. What you think is just over? Yeah. No, they're they're done with Mac Jones. Yeah, there's, no, no, there's no. no tipping point here. Well, no, no. Is there a tipping point where eventually they just roll out Zappy? They know what they have in Zappy. It's Gosh, not good. They're going to keep. They're going to keep playing Jones, but his time is over. Then move they will on be from him with, after this year. He can't keep his starting job unless they just can't find anyone. Unless he catches fire and, and just <laughs> you know routes Buffalo and goes on a tear the final final eleven games of the season. Falcons at Buccaneers. A, a, actually, a really big game battle for first place in the NFC South. Yeah. Um, do you trust Desmond Ritter? That is the question to ask yourself. Or do you trust Baker Mayfield? Whichever quarterback you trust, I think, is the quarterback you should pick to win the game. I trust Baker Mayfield, so I'm taking the Buccaneers. Where's the game? Tampa In Bay. Tampa. Give me the Buccaneers. The question I wrote down, Ziggy, in my notes is, this one will come down to which QB I trust more. And it's, it's exactly the same thing you said. After the best performance of his career against the Texans, Desmond Ritter comes back with arguably the worst performance of his career against Washington with three interceptions last weekend. He has Getting six, on the roller coaster. He has six picks on the season. No, 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 no. He has six picks on the season. <laughs> Tampa Bay's plus six in the turnover differential this year. I think this Tampa Bay team is good enough to beat everyone except the elite teams in the NFL right now. Uh, they've lost the Lions and the Eagles. Those are their only two. They're going to beat the Falcons especially with it being in Tampa. So I am not hopping on the Desmond Ritter roller coaster ride. I'm going with Baker Mayfield and the Bucks in this one. Steelers at Rams. Another kind of a pretty important game for both teams here. The Rams are three-point favorites. Are you riding with your former squad, Ziggy? The Rams are three-point favorites? Yeah, they are. That line strikes me as so fishy that I don't quite know what to do with it. <laughs> Matthew Stafford is like continuing to play close to an MVP level. I get that people are upset Kyron Williams is out, but it's a McVay offense. It MVP doesn't MVP level. Stafford has played close to an MVP level. This is just true. Look, is he is he quite there? No. Mm. But he's had to play a lot of tough defenses and he has looked good. So I'm going to take Matthew Stafford. I'm going to take the Rams. They are going to cover this easily. Uh, I don't believe in Kenny pick six, so Rams. The crowd will have a lot of Steelers fans here in LA for this one. There will be a lot of terrible towels. They're used to it. No, they're used to it. 
I am also going to roll. Now, you know what? I'm going to go with the Steelers. Uh, the, the the Rams. This has a feeling of that. The Steelers are one of those teams we we call blue sky franchises where things go right for them in games where they shouldn't. The Rams should win this game, but there will probably be like a, a strip sack, re fumble return, touchdown. There'll be something that'll go well for the Steelers. Um, I'm gonna go Pittsburgh in this one. Arizona at Seattle. Seattle a seven and a half point favorite. I like to pick an upset every week. Geno Smith did not look quite himself. He played pretty well, but he had some really bad mistakes last week that ended up costing him the game. Upset watch, I am feeling the Arizona Cardinals for this one. I think the team is all right. I think that they are sick and tired of hearing about how they should be tanked for Caleb Williams. They're taking it out on a divisional rival. Geno lights him up. I was going to say, the Cardinals have been your team this year, Zach. They have been my team this year, but did Ziggy just pick the Cardinals? Ziggy took the Cardinals. Yeah. You like lone problem. wolfing the Cardinals. I like, I like lone wolfing the Cardinals. I am also going with the Seahawks. I think they're going to be my survivor pick this week, but it, it is one that I'm not confident in. I've been very confident in all six of my picks so far. This is the first one where I can see Arizona going in there, and Seattle's prone to the games where they just kind of fall apart on offense. Gino doesn't look the same right now. There's some something's a little bit off this year with Seattle, but I'm gonna roll it's with them. Like he was backup quarterback all his career. It's almost like he was. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Seattle, but seven and a half. I'm not. I would not hit that line. Chargers at Chiefs. The Chiefs are a five and a half point favorite against their division rival. Yeah, boy, uh, you gotta take the Chiefs. I get the Chiefs' offense hasn't been explosive. I get that the Chargers are going to be looking for a win, but I just can't. At a certain point, you got to pick the better team. The Chiefs dominate this division. They own absolutely everyone in it. That includes owning Justin Herbert. Give me the Chiefs. Uh, I will never take Herbert because two will always be better than him. So Chiefs all day. Zach, you use logic and reason. I do. That's what you do. There's a reason why two was the fifth and he was the sixth. The Chargers our last in the NFL in passing yards allowed per game at 289 yards. That does not bode well, in my opinion at least, when you go against Patrick Mahomes. I'm going with the Chiefs in this one. Not sure if I'd hit them on the five. And and they half. got Miko Harmon back. Gun to my head, yeah, I'd take the Chiefs in the points, but Kansas City will win this game. Yeah, Miko Harmon, yeah. Packers at Broncos. Green Bay, a one-and-a-half point favorite on the road. Russell Wilson has looked pretty good this season, actually. But I will say this, that Broncos defense is a get-right game for any quarterback. Jordan Love has struggled, but Watson's finally off the injury report. It's finally time for things to go right for this offense. I think that the Packers offense is going to get it together. Jordan Love is finally going to piece together one of his more complete games after a tough stretch, and the Broncos are going to sit at home feeling sad and lose the game. Uh, you got a hairball? Yeah. Um, we have not seen one yet this season. So I'm going to take a tie. A tie? A tie. You're what? not? No. What? <laughs> we haven't seen one yet this season. Hey, I'm, I am willing to give five points to Zach in his, on his win-loss record if he gets this right. Are you, Ziggy? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is a tie. Okay. You got the terrible Broncos and you got, we don't know Jordan Love. You know what the odds are in this game ending in a tie? Give it to me, Ziggy. Plus 7,000. Yep. Hitting that. You know what the odds down. are of the Packers winning by 37 to 42? <laughs> what? Plus 5,000. 37 to 42? Yeah, no, by, no, not like a win of Oh, by winning by 40 points. Yes. <laughs> I am going to also take, man, I want to take the Broncos in this one because like, I hate the Packers. It's just it doesn't make sense to ever take Denver. I'm going to go Green Bay in this one uh, uncomfortably. I'm you, not you can put a me. bet on neither team getting 10 <laughs> points for plus 4,000. Ziggy, it's, we haven't seen a tie yet this season, and I'm telling you, I, I have this strange feeling. <laughs> it just feeling. has a feeling, man. Just roll well, it. I, I am serious. If you really believe this, you need to put some money on it. No, I'm, if it's I, a tie, if it's a tie, right? Ten bucks will give you a seven hundred dollar payout. Yeah. Jack leaves this seat, and you hop in. Here's the gambling guy. If yeah, it's a tie, yeah, that, that's, yeah, yeah, that yeah. might have to be a guarantee. Well, if there was a time I felt an exact score in the NFL. I placed a one dollar bet on it. Came out with right. two hundred twenty bucks. That was the Bengals, right? 
Yeah, when you feel it, you got to feel it. That was amazing. Yeah. All right. Maybe we're right. Maybe we're squad riding a Packers Broncos time not, this week. I am not squad riding that. Get Let us know in the comment here. section if you're squad riding with Zach on the tie. Dolphins at Eagles. Eagles are two and a half point favorites. Let's see if Zach winds up picking his squad. We already know what Zach's going to pick. But I'll say this. The odd just keeps sliding in the Dolphins' favor. Right? The birds opened as favorites. But they're going to lose the game. It's that simple. The Dolphins' offense is just too good. Pat McAfee and Mike Lombardi both picked the Eagles. I think this is as good a reason as you can get to side of the Dolphins. Yeah. Dolphins are going to win this one. Fins up, baby. Fins up. Fins up all day. To make it a clean sweep. I talked about the Dolphins not having a signature win over the past year and a half of football. And are, it's are true. You gonna, are you going to give me like this? The, what you always do now? I've never seen the signature win. And I'm going to pick the Eagles. Is Listen, this what you're going to do to me right finish. now? I, I haven't seen them get the signature win. They always mm-hmm. come up short in the big moments. This is the spot where the Eagles are going to get right against the Jets. That's what everyone would say, and that's what I would normally say. Not this weekend. This weekend, Miami goes into Philly. That offense does not slow down. It's an injured Eagles team. It's an Eagles team that doesn't have themselves figured out at the moment. Fins up, baby. Let's go. Dolphins in Philadelphia against the the upset. I'm not making the noise. You're making the noise. I can't do it. I I can't do it. (laughs) We need Jack here for the Dolphins. We do need Jack. And now this brings us to really the, uh, the most important game of the week. 49ers, seven-point favorites at the Vikings on Monday Night Football. Is it possible that we all take the Vikings here? I have not taken the Vikings in a single game this season. Really? really I don't think I have. I think think I've... Maybe one. I've... At least five games. I might have taken them. I think you took them against the Eagles. Okay, yeah, no, I did. You're right. So five out of the six games, I took the... I've taken the team against the Vikings... And boy, the 49ers are going to town. On the other hand, <laughs> Paul, what is the most Vikings outcome of this game? Yeah, the most Viking thing to do would be to, to win this game, get the fan base hope and belief again, and then wind up going seven. And I am taking the Minnesota Vikings, not only plus seven. I am taking the Vikings money line. <laughs> Skull, brother. <laughs> uh, no, Ziggy, you know what? You've inspired me. Vikings all day. <laughs> yeah, we right. squad riding the Vikings? <laughs> yeah, we're squad riding, right, I'm, 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 I'm taking them every game this year, so I guess I have to keep... I can't... Can we, can this we, this we, can't be the one when you guys go Vikings or I go Niners. It's, can it we, feels can we wrong. parlay uh, the Vikings and uh, my tie? <laughs> the tie? <laughs> see, see, what kind of odds we got Ziggy, can, you, can you see what a Packers, <laughs> what a Packers Broncos tie? And yeah, hold on. Let, let me look up DraftKings real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this uh, bet in. See what we can get. <laughs> it's probably one of those the ones where they won't allow. Oh, it. just a reminder too. We we don't have a gambling sponsor, so so Ziggy's using an unidentified sportsbook at the moment. You're right. Yeah, I am using it's a an unidentified uh, flying yeah. object. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. So okay. So we got our tie. How about the Vikings by forty? Of the. <laughs> you want you want Vikings? Hold on. Let's let, let's oh, look at Vikings like, money line. Vikings money line. Got to load up the Vikings game. I know this is thrilling content for the folks at home, but this, this really matters. They want to hear this. And you want the Vikings money line? You can indeed parlay that. Oh, you can. $10 would give you 2.5K. I mean, we, it's plus 24,000. Oh, ooh. Oh. Ooh. Maybe a little squad ride, yeah, a little sprinkle. $100 on, uh, on the tie and the Vikings winning. Oh, that's horrible. That is horrible. I'm, I'm not even looking at that. But no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Because hear me out. What would be a more Vikings outcome? Not beating the 49ers. No, that's that's too much. But the 49ers can't win either. A tie between the Vikings and the 49ers. You parlay that. $10 will give you 57 k Wow. Wait, what's, what, what is the... What is the uh, odds for a tie in that game? It's got to be uh, plus plus eight thousand. I was gonna say it's got to be worse than the Broncos one. Oh, so what? Why is that? The worst? Oh, our way together yeah, is yeah. plus five hundred seventy-five thousand. I mean, that's two ties in one one week. That's life-changing money right there. It is. Can you imagine? We could buy a studio. Like, could you imagine if you could like? We already have a studio, Ziggy. Rig a game. 
so that it would be a tie. <laughs> people people think that the NFL is rigged. This is really it's silly. Scripted. Man, it's scripted. Come on, five hundred seventy thousand. I've been thinking about winning the lottery a lot lately. I was talking with Zach. Zach came over to my house the other day, and we had a fifteen minute discussion about this. Wow. Yeah. That's big, that is winning the lottery. Five hundred seventy. Well, Zach and I were talking five hundred mil, but yeah, five hundred seventy thousand. I mean, I take that too. The lottery's Jeez. up to like a billion and a half, almost right, isn't it? I have no desire to win the lottery. Yeah, I mean, I, well, oh, look, my look, wife, my yeah, wife would get discussion. worse if I won the lottery. It would. I don't think my life would get worse, but I don't think it I would change. get worse. I don't know. You'd have to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life. Maybe uh, you would. But you know, I'll, I'll say this about the bike because I don't want I. We can have our watery segment. That's off season content right there. I talked about the Vikings. Why is it a Vikings outcome to win? You might wonder. Folks might be thinking, you know, the Vikings they just lose, but not so. For the season is teetering in the balance. There are two ways this can go, right? We could trade some players, try and tear down a little bit, get ready for next year, get an early pick. You know, I'm not saying number one. But an early enough pick. Or we could try and make a run for it. Now, run Marcus Davenport just went to IR. But run, I read an article. This I read an article in the Star Ledger this morning arguing that the Vikings need to try and go for it. Because in the NFC Wait, there are what no was the title? Contenders. What was the title? Uh hold on, let me get the You said Vikings need to go for it? Yeah, the title oh. was um the Vikings should forget tanking for Caleb Williams. In a mediocre NFL, the Vikings... And the reason why there are no more unbeated teams, there are no more surefire losers, as they put it, there are, quote, too many reasons not to tank. This Vikings team is going absolutely nowhere. Nowhere. And can't, I, I can't, can't stand it. watching this team... Like, I get, I get that losing sucks, right? We had a whole segment about this earlier in the show. But the Vikings have been stuck in a bad spot for a while. And at a certain point, we just have to start the new era, right? The competitive rebuild is just delaying the rebuild for a little while. I don't understand. I'm. You don't have to totally strip, th- strip it for bare parts, right? Like if Daniil Hunter wants to stick around for a long time, if Justin Jefferson wants to stick around for a long time, you can sign those guys to deals. But when it comes to someone like Kirk Cousins, who we all know the Vikings aren't going to re-sign in the offseason, who you can get if he's willing to go reasonable draft capital for now. I don't get it. And look at the situation our new quarterback will be walking into. Best pair of tackles in the NFL. Best wide receiver in the NFL. A defense, though, Brian Flores is showing some signs of life. An offensive-minded head coach. An owner that's willing to spend money. It could be so good, Paul. And (laughs) we just won't. This is... is Probably the most disheartened I've been as a Vikings fan in eight years since. No, nine I mean years. I texted you. I texted you about the Bears game this weekend, right? We got outplayed. We were worse than the Bears, and we won. Oh, it's it classic is the Vikings. worst combination. It's classic Vikings. This is this is what we do. We can't just we can't just suck. You want your five minute rant here? I'll put you on the big screen. Give it to everybody. No, I don't have. I don't. I don't have a five minute rant. It's 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 everything Ziggy's saying is exactly. What I agree with from from top to bottom, the team needs a lot of changes here. I just Justin Jefferson's obviously someone that you you keep, want to keep around. You want to keep Daniel Hunter if you can, but given that contract situation and his injury history, probably gonna wind up moving him at the deadline. We'll see. It's just the worst place to be in all of sports is the middle, right. and we have this like attraction. It's like a magnet to being in the middle where we can't just blow it up. And even when we're good, it's like, yeah, we're good, but we kind of suck at the same time. And then you see us going loose to the Giants, who are currently one and five. The Giants have won like three of their four of their last fifteen games, something like that. The, the Giants are not a good football team, and they blew us out in the playoffs at home. Even though it was a seven point game, it really wasn't that close. The problem with Minnesota is they they can't restart. They just won't do it. And you have to look at the landscape of the NFL right now and say, yeah. We are not close to competing. We're not any. We're nowhere near being close to competing. And until you can just say, and it's it's hard when Kirk won't waive his trade clause, and and you're stuck with Kirk Cousins because it's not his fault that they're bad. 
and it's not his, and I don't blame him for sticking around because that's what I would do too. He's in. He's yeah. In why would he want to leave? His his family settled there. He's getting paid. Yeah. He doesn't want to enter a new offense and totally screw up his like contract year. Yeah. I'm not blaming Kirk, but we shouldn't be in this position. From, in the first from an place. organizational standpoint, though, they are in absolute purgatory, and that's where you. you you, you, that's where you, they want to be. That, no, and, and they, they, I know, I know. No one wants to lose. You said it on the show. Losing sucks, but sometimes you have to lose to eventually win. And w- I, I commend them to some degree for, for trying to find hope in these situations. But at some point, you got to wake up and smell the roses. Like, yeah, we're not very good. And you're not going to be good until you finally, like, you have to restart. Teams do that. And the bill, the Bills have Josh Allen right now. The Bengals have Joe Burrow. The Jaguars have Trevor Lawrence. You find you, yeah, sure. You guys have Tua. Like you move on and you get a new quarterback and event, and and that's part of the process. We're we're not really in a position to do that with Kirk right now, but I don't know. You can't just say go out there and lose. Like that's that, that that's not that's the, not the, possible. The, these guys aren't there to lose. The players no, aren't there, there to lose. lose. The coaches aren't there to lose. I get it, but. Boy, howdy! The Vikings have got to it's, get it. It's, that's why it's disappointing because you can't you can't go out there and say lose a football game. Like I, I no one, you, you, it's a, it's against the rules. You can't do that. But I know. the Dolphins have tried. Yeah, Dolphins I know. tried. I know. We got in trouble. For but that at one. the same time, it's just you watch this team. You're like, God, they're so much. Oh, they're definitely better than the Panthers. They're definitely better than the Bears. That's why it's disheartening because they are like the below average but not bad team. Which is even like you'd rather if you're going to be above average, but not good, you still make a run at things. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolute. It sucks, but that's it. That's it. That that's the rant. We don't need to. You got it all out of you. Yeah, I think so. I, it's, it's, right. it's it's hell. I mean, it's purgatory. That's what it is. It's you know right. at, at this point, I'm waiting on other people to to save me. <laughs> so we'll Some see what happens fan. with the Vikings. Go I know I root for the Dolphins. I I would say that this year, as as the Dolphins make their playoff run, I will be cheering for them. Nice. Yeah. So there you go. The week seven prediction show. A little bit of everything on this show. Some uh, some injury roundups, some emotional releases, game picks. Great. Uh, some really since there's no Jack Cap right now. No Jack we, Cap, yeah. We gave you a great, uh, <laughs> great parlay to do this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Without Jack yeah. here, your parlay is uh, for $570,000, $100 on the Vikings and 49ers to tie, and the Packers and Broncos. To, I mean, dude, if that hits... Because like, none of us are going to bet that. But if that hits and we come back to this reel, I, the show might, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do, man. God, that, I, I might have to, we might have to just put like five bucks on it just, just in case if it hits, because that would be devastating. <laughs> it would be, it would be, it would be burning a lottery ticket uh, or a, a tiny lottery ticket, but still. So, okay. We'll be back with the week seven reaction show. Thanks again for sticking around. If you watched the whole episode, we thank you very much. Um, if you were just in for a couple of clips here or there and stuck around till the end, thank you as well. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the show. You could check out our uh, our merch shop in the there's a link below. We have a couple shirts, and we could, we're always down for some new ideas too. So feel free to drop that in the comments, and uh, and we'll see you in a couple of days. Thanks for listening.